John, please tell me the one thing that you want to get through to people, the one thing that's going to really impact vibrant longevity. Well, longevity we now know is all about accumulated stress levels in the body. Uh, stress creates toxicity in the body, it accumulates and accumulates and accumulates and everything slowly goes down. And if we don't want to accumulate, then we need to, of course, we need to have regular exercise for circulation, we need to have that better diet. Uh, but what often people don't realize is the importance of their relationships, the quality of their intimate relationships and the quality of their social relationships. When you're together with a group, you feel safe. So when you have friends around you on a constant basis, singing, eating, sharing, talking, there's a level of safety that you feel. Because when you're isolated, uh, throughout history, the, the, the brain goes, oh, you're in danger. So when you're around people, a fire, conversation, there's a level of safety that lowers cortisol levels. And cortisol, the stress hormone, we know will cause you to age faster. It also cause all the sicknesses it inhibits. When you have chronic cortisol going up because you don't feel that support on a continuous basis, the quality of relationships, what happens is your digestion becomes, uh, slows down. You can't fully digest your proteins to produce the amino acids in the brain so you feel good, feel motivated, feel energized. So mood is dramatically affected. Brain function is dramatically affected. We know as a fact when chronic cortisol inhibits the immune system. So now you become vulnerable to all this sickness and disease. So if, if we want to live long life and quality life, quality of our relationships, I think, is the most important thing. Hmm. Now, if you want to have super longevity, then you go beyond just, you, you have the support of a network of friends and family and a security in your life. Safety lowers cortisol levels. When cortisol levels go into balance, or when they go down to, to not a chronic high state, I mean, cortisol's not bad. I mean, you gotta have you it. You need some. You need some, yeah. but uh, too much is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you have cortisol levels in the right realm, what will happen is your hormones will go into balance. Now, for men, we need 10 times minimum, sometimes 20 or 30 for some men, depending on how muscular they are, in order to have well-being. If your testosterone goes down, you have a heart attack. You know, the one consistent factor for men with heart attacks, which is number one cause of death, premature death, is low testosterone. It's not cholesterol. That's half, half people who die have high cholesterol, half have low cholesterol. So there could be some factors there. But for men, testosterone's everything. And that's that feeling of, I make a difference. I'm successful in contributing to the well-being of others. And it, so many men, when they retire, they've got two to three years to live statistically because they're no longer feeling, I have to get up and do something that's gonna be of service to others. To a certain extent, they feel like, ah, oh, now this is my time. And yeah, it is your time. Find a job that makes you feel good, <laughs> that you can enjoy. But you still need to have that job or that sense of service, that sense of selflessness, where I'm doing something particularly for you not just for me, but for you. And it creates a sense of well-being over there. Now for women, one of their challenges as they get older is not testosterone, that's the male hormone. For women, it's particularly estrogen. Estrogen levels start to drop with menopause. And there's so many things that can assist a woman in continuing to produce the right amount of estrogen in her body. And that is balancing the testosterone that gets produced when she's taking care of others to the estrogen that gets produced when she's getting help from others. So most of you aren't aware of this. So what we're doing is biohacking our hormones through our behaviors, which nobody's ever discovered before, but this is the most powerful thing. It's right there in front of us and nobody's pointed it out. We know that when men stop working, they go down. When women start to get sick, their estrogen levels are dropping. Well, we now know in sociology, in psychology, that when you're depending on someone, when you feel, I don't have to do it myself, I can depend on you, estrogen levels go up. So this is like a miraculous thing. Women have to realize that, you know, you get older, you kind of feel like, I can't trust anybody, I'm going to do it myself. That's a death sentence. You've got to like say, who can I trust? Who can I depend upon? There's a lot of ways to produce estrogen. 
of being an acquire, where you have a choir leader, going to see your doctor, because you're depending on him for your well-being, uh, going to yoga classes where you feel safe, but you're also following a leader. Uh, there's uh, uh, certainly religions, you know, when you go and you have a, a, guide, a guide who inspires you and teaches you any kind of education, continuing to learn where you depend on someone else for your growth, for your well-being, and for your happiness. And that will keep your estrogen up. Now that creates a, about 10 times more estrogen than a man needs to make for well-being, for a woman to have this sense of well-being and low stress levels. And now let's talk about super longevity. Super longevity comes with love and sex, love and sex. So the foundation of love is for men to feel this testosterone at least 10 times higher than a woman, for a woman to have estrogen at least 10 times higher than a man. Now what we have is the foundation to double. When you double, what you have is amazing sex. And unfortunately, men aren't taught the secrets of great sex, so women don't get what they need and women don't know what they need quite often, so they don't know how to communicate it in a way that says, oh, I like this, or I like this, or this feels good. It's kind of it's this automatic unconscious process. And so what we have to do is learn, have sexual education. And of course, I've written several books on this subject, but the, the, the essence of it, if we could shorten it down to this short interview, uh, is men have to learn how to go slow, and women have to learn how to allow him to provide pleasure for him. In the context of great sex, it's not about her pleasing him. It's about him pleasing her. That raises his testosterone when she feels I can depend on his touch and his loving touch to experience greater pleasure. That's a maximum estrogen stimulator. So that means for men to slow down. That means for women to practice enjoying it and don't do anything you don't enjoy. So you have to give signals, you have to have communication around it, you have to talk about it. Reading books about sex, instruction manuals and so forth is really good because it makes it safer to talk about it because most people mm -hmm. don't talk about sex. And if we could shorten it down even more, we we'll basically say men are like Ferraris, we just want to zoom, and uh, <laughs> women are like crock pots, you put it in, it takes a while to heat up. <laughs> let it warm up and let it warm up, and it's a, uh, good communication outside the bedroom, romantic dates, affection. You know, these are the things I write about in Men Are From Mars. All very important, but also just as important as what goes on in the bedroom. And so many couples will go, well, how much sex should we have? It's always a question that people have. And who can say the answer to that? Well, science comes to the, answer, to the rescue. The Japanese did a study, I've done several studies on what happens to men when they have sex. And when you, a man, and you have sex on Saturday night, what will happen is your uh, testosterone levels will go to half. And so while you're having sex, if you were really enjoying it, it would be at an alpha level. It would go very high. And then it would go down to half. And then if you have sex in two days, you're starting sex at half. Because it will stay at half for six days. And on the seventh day, it doubles. So couples often lose interest in sex. They think, oh, we don't care about it so much. That's because they had too much sex. So this is like too eating frequent. too much too frequently. Mm -hmm. So a really healthy amount is particularly if you sense any waning in the excitement and the passion about your private intimate moments in the bedroom. Stop having so much sex. And what you do is you do it once a week, say Saturday night, his testosterone will come back to like the normal level and it will stay there for about six days, and then biologically, automatically, it will double, and he becomes like a superman in terms of his virility, his vitality, his energy, and they're trying to get athletes to do this. They just can't get them to go for six days, <laughs> but it will actually improve their athletic mm -hmm. performance, and it's measurable, and of course, the testosterone levels are measurable as well. But what happens when a man's testosterone level double when he makes love to his mm -hmm. wife is that he bonds with her more, and she feels more loved and supported. There's an energetic exchange when high testosterone is interacting with her. Her estrogen goes to very high levels as well. So they bond at a deeper level. If every time uh, he approaches her and the testosterone levels aren't at that level, then she doesn't feel as desired, as special, as loved, and gradually the interest in sex goes down. So uh, the right amount of sex and the way to have sex, and of course the most important part, Thing, the most 
important person you're having sex with should always be the person you love the most. That's great. That's great, John. How can people learn more? Well, people can learn more. I have a, a plethora of books, Mars, Venus in the Bedroom, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Uh, 25 years later, I wrote Beyond Mars and Venus, which helps us to understand the hormones of well-being and happiness and how women can generate more estrogen, how men can generate more testosterone. Much of what we talked about today is in Beyond Mars and Venus. I have a, a, ra a wide range of classes that are free mm -hmm. on my website, marsvenus.com. Terrific. Thank you so much, John Craig. Happy.